Welcome to Friday Night Lights. I'm Craig Smiley. He's Mike Fenner, and we'll hear from Tom Decker in a little bit. High school football is back, Mike. Cathedral Prep, the Ramblers, haven't lost a regular season game since the very first game of 2015, 28 in a row. The Browns have managed to win four regular season games in that stretch, but that's not what matters tonight. The two-time defending state champion Ramblers are tested right out of the gates, heading down to Pittsburgh to open the season. Taking on Central Catholic, they beat them up last year. Ramblers led 7-0 early thanks to a Jaheim Howard touchdown run, but Prep doing it on defense as well. Urban Williams, the interception. Later in the first, Regan Schleicher getting the start at quarterback, finds Billy Lucas for the nice game there. Then Schleicher going to show off the legs, of course, transferring from McDowell, and he's following Lucas, picking up some yardage there leads to a Colin Kelly 22 yard touchdown prep led 10 nothing but the Vikings rally and the streak is over prep falls tonight your final was 24 to 21 now over at McDowell it's a new quarterback a new running back but plenty of talent back as well for the Trojans under head coach Brad Orlando and much like prep a season opening road trip could do big things for Orlando's crew as they try to build that early season chemistry as well Brad Orlando's Trojans matched up with Seneca Valley in the opener on the road early in this one Seneca Valley striking first Gabe Lawson airing it out to Josh McLean. 45 yards in stride for the touchdown. 6 0 after the missed extra point on the ensuing kickoff. It's Damon Baraducci trying to make something happen for the Trojans, but up the gut has it stripped, and Seneca Valley recovers the fumble. Tough start for the Trojans, but they lock it down on defense. Watch the hustle play from senior linebacker Sebastian. Muberek makes the stop in the backfield. Seneca Valley will be forced to try a field goal. Seth Winters hits the 37-yarder. McDowell falls in this one in the opener. 30-6, to six, your final. Big game in town tonight featuring two teams that flat out don't like each other. You know high school football is back in District 10 when Harbor Creek and Iroquois get together, otherwise known as the Battle of the Bridge. And for the last six years, the teams have played for the trophy with that name. Troy Budaszewski making his head coaching debut. Rough start for Iroquois, who lost quarterback Matt Alessi to a shoulder injury in the first quarter. Huskies leading late first half. Matt Tars punt block by Harbor Creek's Drew Starrett, or Starrett. We'll figure it out later. He scoops it and <laughs> takes it back, but it was brought back on a block in the back. But have no fear, the Smith brothers are here. Casey Smith to his brother Cody for the touchdown. 34-6 at the break. In the third, more from the Huskies. Casey Smith rolling, going long for Ryan Whitman behind the defense. And Harbor Creek claims the Battle of the Bridge trophy, 55-6. to Yeah, you never know where momentum's going to go. But uh, we, we played hard and uh, went our way. I felt like we were kind of nervous at first. But then after uh, the first drive, we started to get together and play as a team. To the Erie Sports Store scoreboard, at least for now, Harbor Creek gets the 55-6 to win behind 34 second quarter points. They'll visit Seneca next week. Iroquois hosts Sharpsville. Mercier's prep visiting Meadville. Ray Collins and the Dogs leading it 12-7 to at the half. Second half, a different story, though. Justin Geck shutting down the run, forcing a Meadville punt here with the defense. Tackle for loss. Next Mercier's prep possession. Here's Zach Helsley. A tough run here, moving the chains. And Helsley trying to get through that tough Meadville defense. That would lead to a score. Lakers roll in the second half as they take down the dogs. It's Mercier's prep 33 to 18, the final. Over to Linden Field. Jim Wells, General McLean, Lancers tied with Slippery Rock at 14 in the third, third quarter in this one. Good one tonight. Rocket to the big drive mid third, and Caleb Kammerer takes it in from a few yards out. Missed the PAT though, 20 to 14 game. Lancers had their chances in the fourth quarter. Big fourth down in Rocket territory, and the D line holds and stops McLean to take it over on downs. Later in the fourth, same scenario, just over two to go. Lancers can't move the pile to get the first. And with the defense trying to get the ball back, Cameron nearly takes it to the house. He goes for more than 70 yards on the handoff. Slippery Rock tacks on one more touchdown run, and the Lancers fall 27 to 14 in this one. Also tonight, GM inducted his class of 2018 into the school's athletic. Hall of Fame. Class of four includes two, three 2008 graduates and former football stars Ryan Skelton, not in attendance, Sean Walker, and Atlanta Falcons defensive back Bleedy Ray Wilson, who was also not in attendance, as well as former GM soccer star Tammy Heisewitz. Uh, it's great. Uh, you see all the people here, and uh, it's been like that ever since I played. The community's great, fans are great, and it uh, feels good being here. It's to be an honor. I'm very humbled uh, to be a part of a, a great group of people and athletes um, that have been at this school before. 
Next, we're off to Grove City, where the Eagles take on the Bison of Fort LaBeouf. Early in the first, and Fort LaBeouf's Cole Dawson uh, going to get it going here for the offense. And how about looking to roll out and throw? But this one's tipped up in the air a couple different times and intercepted. Grove City taking over. And later in the first, Brady Callahan for the Eagles. Gets this one to Tyler Greer for the game's first touchdown. 7 0 Grove City towards the end of the quarter. Callahan hands it off to Greer, but he fumbles. Ball recovered by Matt Howard, who crosses the goal line to make it 13 0. They miss the extra point. Grove City, the big win over the Bison, 48 7, your final. Sean Humes, Northeast, great pickers with a 13 0 first half lead on Tom Haynes. Franklin Knights at 10 Miller Stadium. And here come the Knights. Junior quarterback Ian Haynes looking for Eli Stewart. And Stewart does the rest, breaks a tackle, gets to the sideline. He gone. 13-6 after a blocked PAT Northeast with it late in the first half. Kean Skrekla airs it out right to the hands of Franklin's Trey Carulli. Takes it down the sidelines. Knights back in business just before the break. Haynes rolls right and he finds Dalton Buckley. And the Knights say knee. And they beat Northeast 34 to 21. Out at Girard, longtime Jackets assistant Bill McNally made his head coaching debut, taking on the Cambridge Springs Blue Devils tonight. First quarter in this one, no score. Blue Devils on the move. It's Chase Schultz picking up the first down. Cambridge would fail on fourth down and turn it over, however. How about Girard's first offensive snap under McNally? It's a double handoff, and Austin Barrett bombs one deep to Corey Russell for more than a 40 yard pickup. Jackets are in the red zone and in business. And then it's quarterback Cameron Feathers who finishes. It off, takes it in for the touchdown from a yard out. McNally earns his first win in game one. Gerard takes it 10 to 6 behind a nice defensive performance tonight. Heading out east, first year Fairview head coach Nathan Liberty coming over from Cockerton, leading the Tigers against the Warren Dragons. No score in the first tier. Dragons on the move and looking to get it going through the air, but Tigers D line and Travis Shore with the takedown for the sack for Fairview. That drive stalled, but later in the half, the Dragons get a big run to get inside the Fairview five. Marvin Bryant on the move for Warren and a couple plays later. He gets rewarded. Bryant, the senior tailback, going off right tackle, staying in bounds down the sideline, scores. Dragons go in front, 6 0. Warren runs it from there. The Dragons beat Fairview 31 to 7. Seneca trotting out 20 players under first year head coach Scott Bolheimer against Brian Patton's Corey Beavers. First quarter, Zach Lesher back to pass for Corey, but it's Seneca star Wyatt Schaefer who comes up with the interception there, and he would try to go the distance, doesn't quite do so, but after Schaefer taken down. He comes in at quarterback, and he finds Zach Mong finding his way. Seneca with the early lead, but the Beavers would use the no-huddle offense to wear down the Bobcats. Lester going to air it out on third and long for Elijah Ekin, and he goes up and gets it. Corey beats Seneca tonight, 39-14. to Let's continue to roll here out to Albion. We go Mark Brooks in year two leading Northwestern, taking on Brian Herrick's Greenville Trojans tonight. Pick it up late in the first half. Cats up by one. Trojans Ian Porter with a nice first down run, but Greenville's drive would stall. Move ahead, same score. A quick jet pitch for Northwestern to the running back Jeremy Dohanick. He gets first down yardage as well. And then later in the half, Northwestern looking to get started as quarterback Derek Albert takes off for nearly 40 yards. Penalties told the story in the first half of this one, but Northwestern earned the 19 to 12 win over Greenville. Now it's time to say hello for the first time this season to the third member of our team, Mr. Thomas Decker. Take it away. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Well, every two years, District 10 realigns its region for all sports, and let's just put it out there right now. It's going to take a while to figure out just what's going on in high school football. A year ago, Conneaut area outscored Oil City 60 to 58 in a region showdown. Tonight, these two opened the season in a non-region play in Lionsville. Nonetheless. The Eagles looking to pick up that win on opening night here. First quarter action, it would be Oil City striking first. That's Christian Cole. Nice little cut there. As he goes up the middle, making it 8 nothing Oilers. Cash looking for the answer, and Kyle Sheets expecting big things from him. He's scrambling around for his life. He's just going to chuck it, and look who's there. DeMarco Francis, he's taking it in for the pick six. That made it 14 to nothing Oilers. Sheets, though, unfazed. He's going to bounce back and check out this move. Cuts it inside, and he's heading out. They're going to call him out at the one here. I'd like to see the replay on that one. Next play, he'd punch it in. Wouldn't be enough, though. Oil City takes this one, 46 to 27. Next, it's Titusville at Sagertown. Fourth quarter action. Panthers trailing 28 to 6. Mason McClure. He's going to try to get something done in the air. He's going to find Ezra Maddox along the sideline. That's a nice play to pick up the first down. Rockets, though, not having any more of it. The defense picks things up. That's Riley Corklin. 
Coming up for the ride there on the sack. Then more defense here. They're going to get to McClure one more time. This time forcing the fumble. Corcoran's going to scoop it up, and he's heading the rest of the way for another score here. Rockets go on to take this one, 35-2-6. And finally, Union City under head coach Randy Gunther taking on Reynolds in Bear Country tonight. High-scoring affair in this one. Midway through the third, the Raiders looking to throw it deep, but check out Braden Kinney's picking it off, and he is heading the other way. This would make it 30 to 26. Reynolds looking good here early in the fourth though. Reynolds looking for a little bit more. Tyrese Baker taking the ball from about 15 yards out. That's going to make it 36 to 28. Union City though, they come up just short in this one. 44 to 28 is your final gentleman. That's it for me. Back to you. Hey, thanks, Tom. Still the cover. Check it in with the Seawolves Plus. More from week one of high school football. You're watching Friday Night Lights on Jet 24.